soul collage is a process based on every soul's innate love of images, its inspired childlike imagination, and its powerful intuition. We call these the three magical eyes, images, imagination, and intuition. I'm Sina Frost, the birth mother of this process, a process which has evolved in astonishing ways since its beginning around 1990. Back then, after three years of work with the inspirational teacher, Jean Houston, I set out to weave together my life passions, passions for creativity and spirituality and psychology. I wanted to manifest a creative and imaginative way to explore and heal and evolve my soul. At first I played with it as a practice just for myself, and then I decided to share it as a process in my psychotherapy groups. My clients responded eagerly, and they helped me see how the pieces go together, how they go together in the most interesting ways. After a time, people, friends, and colleagues outside my therapy practice wanted to learn about it too, and for years I held workshops in my living room for anyone who wanted to cut and paste, and they came, and people seemed to fall in love with the process, and they passed the word along.
while we were out doing the photo, I just really felt how much of a community we have become. Had you ever had a photo taken that quickly? It was like an organism moving as one. It was beautiful. I think this is what I've always wanted in my life. What's always been important to me in my life is community. I recognize that most strongly when I had a personal paradigm shift in the late 80s. I had what some people call a kundalini opening, a spiritual emergency, and everything in my life changed. I was always shaking or jerking or my head was going around and around when I meditated. Lots of internal changes. Everybody that I worked with or associated with couldn't understand that. I had no connection to anybody. And so when my teacher, Stan Groff, and his wife started a three-year training, I said, I'm signing up. I wasn't signing up for training. I was signing up for community, people that understood. And I know that all of you are going through personal paradigm shifts. The little story versus the larger story. The larger story is a death and rebirth, but we are dying personally and becoming something new. It's like the egg cracking, the belief system that holds us cracking because we are too big for it now. We're birthing something new and we don't know what that is yet. But we have a pretty good idea from this weekend <laughs> what it might look like. And it is beautiful. We recognize that for human life to thrive, it is best lived in a community that is supportive and compassionate. A community that is able to listen and understand and tolerate many points of view. A community that is creative and imaginative as well as smart. A community where masculine and feminine energies are valued equally even though they do offer different gifts. And finally, a community where an underlying spirituality recognizes the life-sustaining flow of spirit within all creation. One very essential piece of the new paradigm will be the human capacity to accept, to even embrace diversity and to listen to different perspectives. In this community, we can show our inner parts, allow ourselves to be vulnerable without fear of rejection. There's a new book that's been rather highly acclaimed that I haven't read yet, but I read an extensive review of it. David Brooks, who is a commentator on PBS and has always been a rather conservative guy, Brooks and Shields, commentating on the news, has written a book called The Social Animal. It's done an extensive research in neurological stuff and validates what we're doing here. He says, who we are is largely determined by the hidden workings of our unconscious mind, and it all emerges from an infinitely complex set of neuronal signals and that determines what we do more than anything we <coughs> consciously do. The other major thing that he said is that humans are caught up in the loneliness loop, that what drives us ultimately is the yearning for community and to be understood by others. And I think what he doesn't account for is Indra's net and the reflection and the one and all that, but he does account for the drive to community, I think, that's what's working in Soul Collage. And what we have here is a wonderful system where not only are we creating a community of netters inside us that work together and that we know, we're creating a community of others that we know and can allow to be unique and nurture to be unique and still be one. What we saw last night was everybody shining in their own individuality. And yet, what we saw getting the picture taken was this 
being one. I think there are very few communities, spiritual communities anyway, that have focused on the uniqueness and fostering the uniqueness as well as the one. They usually focus on the one, either the one guru or the one universal, but not really bringing out the individual potential that gives to the one. I think what soul collage has that a lot of communities may not yet, and may be, as Sina says, a lot of communities that we don't even know of are happening out there with hope. And we have values of creativity, values that everyone is unique and has a gift to give. We have a value of abundance and mutual encouragement and acceptance of others and a value of our intuition of what we know that we don't know we know and inclusiveness. All of this without dogma, but with some wonderful ritual. Sina came up with, I think it was the second training. She said, I got it, we, we do this card circle. So we have something that we have all participated in. Even people that will see this video or hear this audio years from now maybe will have participated in the card circle ritual of the training where everyone steps into the center of soul collage in their life and looks around and sees how they're connected to everyone else. They go in there stepping on other people's cards as we all do in community. We step on each other, but we get there. We have almost 1,200 facilitators out there. And if they all have an average of 50 cards, do you know how big a card circle would be with that? 60,000 cards. And it's growing. I mean, we're at the point of exponential. And how cool is that? If we can keep this feeling somehow, that's going to be the key. People are awakening to a sense of a new age coming, of a world united, of partnership across differences. People are examining the root causes of our turmoil and demanding big changes, economic changes, military changes, and even social and spiritual changes. The Occupy Wall Street movement is a good example. There's a huge cry for change toward balance. Let's now suppose a person does his or her own balancing and deepening work with their soul collage cards and their soul collage community, and then decides to become a facilitator, decides to take the process out into other communities and introduce it. Actually, there are many people doing this. They're taking it into workplaces, into schools, into churches and temples and other spiritual communities, also into detention homes and prisons, and into homes for the elderly and disabled, and many, many other venues, including simply to friends and family. Once adopted as a life practice, Soul Collage lets people use powerful images as springboards for their intuition. Images let intuition dive down into soul wisdom and come back up with surprising answers. These answers will release and balance energies, first of all for the individual, but then also they may be answers that can serve to solve community and world problems. I want to tell you a little bit about the Oracle because we did it last time, but there's so many people that weren't in Arizona, and I would like to just tell you how it originated. It was at the first training that we trained a number of facilitators, and afterwards we were like confused. We didn't know how to take this forward, and there was the issues of the copyright and the cards, and well, how do we do this in a way that's ethical and has integrity and so forth. So we asked that question in a community question sitting outside around a table at Celine's house and that was the answer. We take it 
with integrity, ethics, and under the radar for a period of time. We do not put it out to the major people. We don't go to Oprah at this point. And <laughs> the very strong message was not too fast until we're ready for it. And we followed that. We, the guidance came and we followed it. At the first Soul Collage Conference, we asked another community question. And it became the oracle at that point, that we all are the oracle. The oracle is the community. What will help Soul Collage do its transformative work? And again, we got holding our spiritual center, holding our integrity, creating diversity came up, bringing in men and teenagers and ethnic groups and lower or, and upper socioeconomic groups and villages of interest. And I think we've done that without calling it that. Maybe we should call it that. It's great. Collaboration and contribution and another conference. Kat and Karen Lubin raised their hands. Said, we'll do it. We'll do it. And they did it. 2008, we did the Oracle again. We kind of future tripped and we said, what will make a difference in 2009, which hadn't been there yet. This was 2008. Those answers are published in the Netter letter, so you can read them. Some of them were funny, like Soul Collage will be done at the White House. And again, back to integrity. In 2009, I had just come from a conference in Wisconsin where I saw Andrew Harvey. My heart just broke open listening to him about what we were up against in terms of the perfect storm of catastrophes in this world, how we were going to mobilize our hope and our sacred activism. It was just so moving. We had a circle up here, and people came up and shared what they got from their cards about what they were committed to do about sacred activism. They wrote them on these kind of cards, and I collected them all, and we cataloged them all. They are also on Netter Letter archives, so you can go back and read them. The question was, what is the guidance offered for our soul collage community at this critical juncture or life on Earth? No one took notes about the sacred circle sharing. It wasn't recorded. It was very deep and heart-touching for anyone who was there. My own commitment was to strengthen my practice, to do yoga, to do pranayama, to do basic exercise. I wanted to take my heart to sign up at a gym and strengthen it because I realized at that conference I wasn't strong enough. My heart wasn't strong enough to take in all of the pain and do something. I've done this, and I bet a lot of people who made commitments have done that, too. I just want to read a little sampling of what people said they were going to do. You may recognize yourselves if you were there. Bless the earth from my heart every day. I'm going to speak up and encourage others to speak up. I'm going to challenge my thinking that we are doomed. I'm going to use less plastic. I'm going to create soul collage cards that honor places. I'm going to work with the Jane Goodall group. I'm going to support my sister in Rwanda in as many ways as possible. I'm going to look into micro-lending. I'm going to offer soul collage in prison. I'm going to make daily choices of organic local food. I'm going to end violence in my internal self. I'm going to be available to companion the dying. I'm going to be in my power. People need to see power that is not destructive. These were all things that people said. In 1968, just seven days before he was shot and killed in Memphis, Martin Luther King Jr. spoke these words in the Washington National Cathedral. I quote, We are tied together in the single garment of destiny, caught in in an inescapable network of mutuality. And still most of us live in the world as if we can escape it. We go on climbing our little ladders, lonely and obsessed with getting up there to the top to reach some singular goal that is waiting there for me. We forget over and over that we are a weaving of threads, a network, a mutuality. Our future on this planet may depend on people living from an understanding of this truth. Today we still have these challenges. 
two years later, I think we're seeing some breakdown of the structures that has to happen in the death rebirth process that's happening. We see changes in ourselves, and I'm really empowered by seeing all the hope and the joy and all of that that we've seen in this conference. I think maybe there's people out there that are still in the fear and grief because every change, even if it's a good change, and some of these aren't so good, has grief involved. How can we expand ourselves to help with that? What is the question? And I struggle and struggle over this you know, every time I have to do it. What is the question in each of your hearts? How can I verbalize that? And if we had a longer process, maybe we'd do little groups and bring it out and decide on a question. But we don't kind of have time. So I want to ask you if this basic question is OK. And it is, what guidance do you have about the paradigm shift? And thinking about that in terms of each of your personal stories and the larger story. What guidance do you have? And I'm asking your netters, what guidance do you have about the paradigm shift? Now, netter is a word you may remember if you read my book on soul collage. What it essentially means in this process is any guide or ally or even challenger who comes into a life and makes a difference. Here in this five-letter word, netter, N-E-T-E-R, was encapsulated the paradoxical unity of the one and the many, which for me is a basic concept of soul collage. Netter means both the one source and also, at the same time, the many beings that spring from source. I had been drawing and reading tarot cards occasionally over the years, so naturally the idea of doing readings with my own personal Netter cards came along next. This exercise, which I call participation in an image, is very central to the soul collage process. We move into the essence of this image and speak words out loud from its perspective. Even if it's an animal or a tree, we give it a voice. We speak what this being appears to be feeling or thinking or planning. You may find it awkward to do it the first few times, but it's worth learning because you'll actually experience for yourself the power of stepping out of your ordinary mind. So what we're going to do with the oracle this time is do a little bit of Ira Progroff style, we'll go into meditation, but any time you feel the need to consult a card or write a note, we're going to do that. But what I'd like you to do is, focusing on the question first, just draw something like three to six cards and have them on your lap. And draw them so you don't know what they are yet. Focusing on that question, what guidance do you have for me and us about the paradigm shift? And when you have your cards chosen, put the rest of your cards down and out of your way so you can really settle in and relax for a little guided meditation induction. And, and then you can use those cards and use that notebook or index card to make a note during the process. We're going to go inside now. And I want to say, because this is an audio tape, that those who may be listening to it as an audio or video later on, please find a safe place to do the meditation and turn off the recording if you're driving. Closing the eyes now, settling into a position where your body is comfortable. So settling into an inner place of connection. And affirming inside that each part of us has intuition and inspiration to share each part of our inside, and each part of this community. Deepening our connection with who we are right now.
our bodies, our emotions right now, our mind, our level of energy, the quality of energy. Maybe you want to say one word to yourself to name that, who you are right now. Deepening our connection to what is so. And now beginning to notice the breath. Just as you're breathing naturally, just notice it. Feeling it enter through the nostrils, down into your lungs. Letting the energy from the breath move through the body to wherever it is needed. And letting the breath awareness move out into the room, breathing together, joining our breath. Connecting our inspiration. And the exhalation, <coughs> sending energy traveling around the group to the left, around in a circle. Giving what we can, receiving energy we need. With every breath, letting that energy move around the circle. Circulating. Resting and giving and receiving. So simple. Breathing in and breathing out. And if it feels right, affirming to ourselves our willingness to open and deepen and see what is so. Creating a soul collage community oracle to focus on receiving guidance for the paradigm shift. Maybe in an inner way, asking a netter to come forward to offer support. Knowing all your netters are already with you. And letting your hand on your lap be ready to write if you want to make a note. Allowing yourself to listen to some questions. Always watching to see if some image comes, some message. Listening to hear what comes all by itself. Tuning into your own channel. Happening naturally. Trusting the process. Listening to my voice and the following questions now, only if it will help you find your own questions and images and answers. Disengaging from my voice if you need the space for your own inquiry. And when you need to open your eyes, opening just enough when there's something to write down, and then closing them again, staying in deep meditation throughout. Making a note when you want to. 
choosing a netter from your cards who want to be with you at any time during this meditation. And then closing your eyes again and holding it, letting it speak to you, maybe making a note to remember. And consider this question. What guidance do you have about the paradigm shift? my personal story, the larger story. Perhaps you might ask, how does major change tend to affect me? How can I get the support I need? How can I be there for others when they are feeling the paradigm shift? Which netter wants to offer guidance about any of these questions? How can we support each other in the face of major change? How can soul collage evolve as a new paradigm community? Which netter or netters want to offer guidance about any of these questions? How can we evolve as a new paradigm community? And if you have any more cards that haven't been turned over that want to be turned over, just take a moment to hear whatever they have to say about any question related to this paradigm shift. And maybe if you don't have time to hear from all of them, just write their names down so you can ask them later too. Feeling the expansiveness of the inner wisdom that answers our questions. And in a moment, prepare to come back into your body, into this community. Feeling the physical presence of this community and its wisdom. But staying in the meditative place as you come back. And when you're ready, just open your eyes. We recognize now that humans must change the way they relate to each other and to planet Earth. We are recognizing again what ancient people knew, that our planet is a living organism. Everything about it is alive, and all life on it is interrelated and precious and essential. Just as every cell in a living human body is related to every other cell, and the whole is dependent on the health of each one. A primary way that we work with these cards in Soul Collage is to have people give voice to the various images on their cards. They imaginatively step into an image and intuitively speak from it. Why? In order to discover answers to their questions, big questions and 
small everyday ones. The soul collage process helps people learn how to listen and how to respect the diverse perspectives of others. Right and wrong don't enter in. Both and will eventually lead to our finding a balanced pattern and a solution that benefits everyone. So we have four cushions up here, kind of a council of the oracle. And if you feel that you have something that's really compelling to say to the group in answer to these questions, I really invite you to come up and take a seat on one of these four cushions. And we have a talking piece, which is a grounded heart. So when you feel ready, you pick it up and say what's important to you to say from the heart. We've had experience with this in the pure spirit circles. And then when you've said it, release your cushion for someone else to come up. And I also would send a special invitation to those of you who don't usually speak to take a risk. I have a teacher, Oberto Araudi in Italy, who says, you have a battery, and the best way to charge it is to take a risk. We will need the wisdom of the sage and the crone to shift in a good way. It is a good change coming, one in which people will partner with spirit to become the precious individual and self-realized person they were meant to be. Support and teach the children. Help them learn to live life creatively. The children are the ones who will truly carry our world through this shift. Help the children to not live in fear and anger. We are not alone. There are many unseen beings who are right here with us, always. Don't sabotage, take care of ourselves, and stay in gratitude. I must let go of my grieving, but look to what I'm grieving and transform that into the gift that I have. My meditative and organized self are gifts I want to share. Black and white thinking and homebody will teach me to put them aside. And as I grieve my sister and the sister that was myself, I need to use my sisterhood to reach out to the Soul Collage community. Open the door to power and abundance. Increase self-knowledge and clarity through intuitive, creative joy. Consider the darkness and dialogue through confusion. Restory with the power of the water bearer and use kundalini snake energy to create love. Stay in the center looking out, you luminous beings. Stand outside, holding the circle of circles. Weave through the communities, person to person, person to animal, person to earth, person to sky, person to water. Face the fear with open mouth and a courageous roar. Stand in shadows. It only takes a speck of light to illuminate even your insides, even your outsides. I am the archetype of beauty. I remind you to stay grounded in your feminine beauty and trust the process. That beauty is an archetype to carry soul collage into the world. 
for we teach others to embrace the beauty in all the parts of the whole. It is the beauty of the images and the cards that draws people into the process. Borrow me, embrace me, and I will help Soul Collage grow. Practice and live kindness to ourselves, to others, and to the earth. Live with and create beauty around us. Find, nurture, and offer calm connectedness, quiet strength. Allow feelings to flow so that they can set the example of how to be feeling. Shift from prostitute to bride. Walk down the aisle with spirit. Mary spirit, be recognized as one with spirit. Stop playing the role of the victim and claim your legitimate power to be recognized as the bride of God in the face of overwhelm. Listen to the animals. The animals can show us the way. Honor the animals. Take care of the animals. Release your shyness. Come out of hiding. Allow your beautiful patterns to be visible. Be willing to be outrageous and eccentric. Use your sword of discernment. The goddess has ascended to her throne. She's seated in your life now. Use her wisdom. This is a journey, and there will be long, dry spells. Prepare yourself for the journey. Many have made it before you. Always acknowledge that you are both light and shadow. Look in your own mirror and choose who you will be in the larger world. Go to the edge and leap. Courageously, you will soar. You will delight. Bring your delight to the world. The world is filled with debris, of course, but step in any way. Step lightly, gracefully. And never forget to tend lovingly all that is dying. All who are suffering, love is all. The fool speaks. The pathway will not look the way you think it might. Accidents and the unexpected will happen, but out of them comes opportunity, and if you are open to them, gifts of new insights. Accept your queenliness, but know it takes a hive to make honey. Allow a flexibility to grow, to listen and to hear. Listen to our grandmothers, Grandmother Earth, to fine tune our listening and our voices. Honor history for today, open to hearing the heron in the sixth chakra, to listening, to hearing, and to the space, to our many parts. Know that we are held and take our places. Trust my heart and community. Open my heart. Teach, heal, be open to the messages, and don't hold back. You must be aware of the planet, that Mother Earth is in trauma and needs you to make changes, to protect, and to help heal. Hold her in reverence, respect, and honor. The path is before you. You must go to the water and offer energy. Pray and visualize the healing hands and light offered for the earth. As we shift from the eagle and anticipate the condor, we need to look to the past to learn about our future and learn continually about ourselves and our connectedness to community. 
Simply be the peace you want in this world and know you are never alone. Now is the time to be fierce and compassionate in breaking down the old structures within. Specifically, you need to support each other in releasing the illusion that we can move forward if we still hate or fight against our body and ignore its language. Listen to the silence. The silence is the limit that holds the words. In the silence are the voices of the silenced the voices that are not here, the voices are not here to speak to us. Listen. Honor the silence. This is what I am beginning to understand. In order to get rid of my fear, I have to admit that it is mine. If I keep saying they are not mine, I will die searching, always feeling that more was promised. Not only my actions, but my omissions become my destiny. I am one who will prepare for the shift with an open and giving and loving heart. I will let my heart shine into this dark and troubled world, reminding myself that many lights will create a flame to overpower the shadows. It is time. Time to touch the inner knowing and let our hearts crack open with the inner light of spirit. Keep the circle. The circle widens as the center is filled with the light of souls and open hearts, shining forth with the love that is our birthright and our birth purpose. The circle widens like a ring of sparkling star shine, heart love reaching through our roots, humanity into the earth healing our mother with a gratitude for the beautiful vessel that she is and reaching into the universe through all space and time. We are the creators of our own destiny. Honor and strengthen your connection with your beloved. Pay attention to the guardian of your caretaker and know this is a time to go inward to fully inhabit your gifts. The time will come when you can let go of this professional container you have created. Meanwhile, refrain from biting the hand that feeds you. Take refuge in the sanctuary of the divine feminine. Feel your connectedness. Love yourself. Be yourself. Love life. Be bold and visible. Embrace all ages and stages in divine love and know all are welcome here. The butterfly opens her wings and flies with the wisdom of the elephant. Open your eyes to truth. Love yourself and let that love embrace others. Trust love and let love break down the fear and resistance, for you are an instrument of change, a sacred activist. Eat only the tender grasses just below the water. I must not judge other people ever. Sometimes all it takes is a turn of the head in a different direction to allow for a different perspective, to see not just what is new, but what has been there with you all along in a new way. Take off the masks, the false smile, the social appropriateness. Be truly, deeply authentic. Let the quirks be shown. Allow the deep waters to rise. Embrace fear with compassion and your fullness and vulnerability are your precious strengths. I am the one who is your heart energy, and I alone can lead you out of this mouth of destruction. Follow me, all of you with your candles, all of you who are the children and grandchildren of this beautiful planet. 
There is a place of balance ahead, and I am leading you in that direction. It is a place where the shadow of war will grow less and less dense, one where the water-bearer who now holds the planet in her arms will be honored, one where people will again dare to think and then act outside this old world's conventional boxes. Somebody put this under my door. I'm going to read it because it's a perfect closing, even though we heard it last night. One of the most calming and powerful actions you can do to intervene in a stormy world is to stand up and show your soul. Soul on deck shines like gold in dark times. The light of the soul throws sparks, can send up flares, build signal fires, causes proper matters to catch fire. To display the lantern of soul in shadowy times like these, to be fierce and to show mercy toward others, both are acts of immediate bravery and greatest necessity. Struggling souls catch the light from other souls who are fully lit and willing to show it. If you would help to calm the tumult, this is one of the strongest things you can do. And I know we can do it. If I've aroused your interest in soul collage, look at the website www.soulcollage.com. Soul collage is always spelled as one word www.soulcollage.com. And perhaps listen to our more detailed CDs. They're ones on each of the suits, as well as the transpersonal cards and readings. Of course, read the Soul Collage book. I also encourage you to read the principles of Soul Collage, which are also on the website. But I want to mention one principle of Soul Collage that is especially important. In order to honor and respect the artists and photographers whose work we choose to collage on our cards, we do not sell our cards. They are only for our personal use, either in individual work or within our circle of interested friends or in our vocational work. So thanks so much for your interest. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm.